Um, well, I worked I, right after I um, had Daniel, when he was about four months old, I um, got a job at Kangaroo Kids, and I always wanted to work with kids, and since I wasn't going to go back to school yet, I figured, well, if I could get a job at a daycare or something like that, that would be really, like, a lot of fun, you know? And it turns out at that job I could take Daniel with me and stuff, so it really worked out, and it was just part time, so it all kind of just fell into place. And about, well, I guess it was about a month ago now, um, we went out of business, so I don't have a job anymore. It's really hard financially right now, um, and with Derek being in school, and he he tries to like help his dad. His dad's an electrician, and he tries to help his dad where he can and stuff to make extra money. But with him being in school, that kind of consumes all his time and stuff. And um, and with right now, with the way things are, nobody's hiring anybody, you know, until you know the beginning of the year. So it's just been really hard trying to um, figure out a way, especially like for Christmas and stuff like that. So we actually, um, Daniel has been on Medicaid since he was born, um, and I got on Medicaid right after I found out I was pregnant. Um, we were not. I didn't have any insurance up until then um, because once I graduated, I was actually off my mother's insurance. So um, it kind of, for about, I guess about a six, seven month period there, I didn't have any insurance at all. Well, when I first found out I was pregnant, we went to the health department because that's where I was going for my, um, like my, I guess it's called family planning for birth control and that kind of sort of thing. And they're actually the ones that direct, directed me into the way of Medicaid. And I actually had a form of Medicaid while I was doing my family planning, but that's all it paid for was like for birth control and women visits and stuff like that. But then they put me on um, medic, full Medicaid, which covered my OB care and stuff. And um, it actually really helped because I don't know how we would have paid those bills if, <laughs> you know, if that hadn't been there. I mean, I knew about Medicaid. Um, but because I had always been on my mom's insurance because it was always offered through her work, you know, I had never had to be on any other different kind of, you know, insurance. So, and actually, you know, I learned a lot of things from my mom about it because she works in the hospital and stuff, so she knew a lot about it. So she actually helped me learn more about it and things like that. And they also give you a big packet and stuff usually when you go and, you know, apply and stuff and get approved, so. When, after he was born, he, um, for a while he was, you know, he, he's never really had any problems, like serious problems. Um, and then he was born in May, so he was born in the summer. And then when it came winter time, he started having ear infections a lot. So he was in and out of the doctor, having to take antibiotics and that kind of thing. And then he continued to have them. And just about, I guess about a month and a half ago now, he actually ended up having to have tubes put in his ears. And... <laughs> that's like putting a down payment on a car. <laughs> so it's really expensive. And um, so that really helped having Medicaid because we probably would have went in debt if we had, you know, because he'd had to have it done, you know. And then he recently got sick and he was actually in the hospital overnight for dehydration because he had a bad virus and couldn't keep anything down. And um, that really helped there too because I don't, you know, like, I don't know how else we would have done it, you know. We, I guess we would have had a bill we couldn't pay on, you know, and we would have went in debt for that too, so. I remember talking on the phone um, when we were getting ready to go to the hospital. I had to come here and get some things to take, and somebody called, and I was just like, I can't talk right now, and I was really short with them, and I know they had to think, like, oh, what is this crazy woman doing, but, um, yeah, he definitely comes first to me and to Derek, and, um, if, if Medicaid hadn't have been there, I guess, like I said, one way or another, we would have figured out something, you know? Well, actually what happened, he actually got the virus during the weekend on Saturday night, and we went to the doctor on Monday morning, um, and they said that he had lost a little bit of weight, like a pound, from the virus, and he couldn't keep anything down, and he had it coming out both ends, and it was just really crazy. So she said, well, we're gonna put him on something, and if he can't, if anything's not, if it's not improving in 24 hours, we'll see him back and then we'll go from there. So we went back and he lost two pounds in 24 hours. And um, so they pretty much just decided right then, you know, because he wasn't able to keep drink or anything down, that they were going to 
put him in the hospital. And we went to the hospital and um, they actually ended up giving him three bags of fluid. He was very dehydrated. And it was a long, you know, even though we were there just like a day and a half, it was still a long process because they had to make sure he could drink and he had to drink so much and prove that he could hold it down. And then he had to gradually move up to ice pops and toast and all this stuff. So it was really scary. It really was. It, um, it was an eye opener, I guess, because when you have a child that, even though you have the Medicaid there and then they're fine, and then all of a sudden something like that happens and it was really serious. Like if he had went a long time like that, he could have really hurt him, so. But if, if we didn't have Medicaid, we would have just, I guess, took out a loan or, I don't know, big borrowed and stilled, because, you know, he, he comes first, so. Even if we didn't have Medicaid, at least, you know, he has it and he's taken care of. Like I said, for him being so healthy up until this point, you know, even though he had those ear infections here and there or whatever, like, that was just going to the doctor. It was never an emergency and needing to go to the hospital. And um, I just, like, I don't know what, re really, I don't know what we have done, would have done if, you know, we didn't have insurance. I guess, you know, we probably would have treated him outpatient or whatever, but we would have figured out something. You know, everybody's gonna have their um, moments when when they need, you know, everybody gets sick. Um, but then there are people that are trying and trying to do good things and make a living and they don't always make enough to have regular insurance. So, I mean, I just think that Medicaid really helps those people that really do need it, you know? And um, I know that there are people that abuse the system and I don't think that that's right, but um, I just really think that even if it's for the kids, at least, when especially if they need the attention, you know, they're getting it. It's not always, um, you know, this person because, you know, they, they're a drug seeker or they're this or they just have endless problems and they want to, you know, be able to go to the hospital anytime they want to so that they can, you know, get anything and anything they want. It's, it's normal everyday people, you know. I mean, I know older people that have to have Medicaid and Medicare and stuff like that, you know, like, and they worked all their lives and they haven't, you know, so, I mean, it's, it's really, it's an eye opener when you see people that work their butt off and then they don't have anything to show for it, you know. Yeah. I just think it's really important for people to know that um, it's not always, you know, the little man or whatever. It, it's everyday people and that, you know, it doesn't just help adults, it helps kids. And that's the most important thing, the kids. And um, like I said, if, if it wasn't for Medicaid, I don't know what we would have done for Daniel. So I just think it's really important for the kids at least, you know, to have, have something there. Don't just think about the bad things that you've seen come out of Medicaid. Don't just think about the people that you've seen use it and abuse it. Think about the people that you haven't seen, the, the families that are working to be in school and to better themselves, and they're just using it for a couple years just to get on their feet. And then they'll be productive members of a society, you know, and then they'll be supporting other people, you know, to be on Medicaid, you know, so just, I just think that that's really important because it's a chain, you know, it just keeps going, so.